Chapter 19, The Children of Today They too are here to serve, but their service comes fresh from an awareness of social justice and harmony, since the worlds from which they have come reflect humanity's next step. Alongside the continuing UFO dramas, there's also a quiet changing of the guard going on, a gradual replacement of those who've served long and hard on the front lines by those still fresh, still eager to lend a hand to the great work on Earth. Many of the people I have met in the last few years, those for whom ideas about wanderers and cosmic evolution resonate strongly, feel that they are soon going home. I regularly hear people say, this is my last lifetime, or they wish it was, and I too feel their fatigue, like war-weary soldiers longing for R&R. &R. Some of these people are those I call the long contract folks, wanderers who've been cycling in human incarnation for thousands of years, some since Atlantis, and they're quite ready to go home. Fortunately, I believe soon they will be going home. This may not be empty hope. Instead, I think it represents a clear inner knowing. But nature abhors a vacuum, and no planet is left without assistance, especially Earth at its present point of development. If we believe that a new age, a new world, a new cycle of human consciousness is dawning, then we can appreciate the urgent need for support. As a newborn doe is frail, thin, and weak in the knees, so too is humanity timid in its new body, a global culture based on honesty, trust, equality, and simple kindness. Coming from a long history of mistrust and strife at all social levels, ethnic, religious, economic, political, and so on, humanity is not quite comfortable in its own skin. Yet we must evolve. The cycles of evolution demand it. Our Earth humanity seems to be a case of collective denial and self-rejection, a massive fear of trusting each other. World history reveals clearly the human tendency to magnify and exaggerate differences, and today's high-tech society, ever more interconnected, actually encourages anonymity. What's left of community with 500 channel TVs available to comfort us alone in our room? But now we're at the threshold of a new cycle of civilization. From modeled seeds of separatism, how can we ever bear the fruit of social unity? Clearly, a society laced with mistrust and selfishness is in for some readjustment. Many of the wanderers who now know their identity and purpose also sense that they have done their part, and that they're really on their way out. Who will take their place? Since we're not alone in the universe and helpers are always ready to step in, who will help humanity lay the groundwork for enlightened society, based on spiritual vision and universal principles? Well, perhaps your ten-year-old daughter and your eight-year-old son. I've heard many tales of exceptional children from women who consider themselves wanderers or light workers. Many claim to have felt a divine presence overshadowing their pregnancy, and many felt blessed and protected. Stories of precocious five-year-olds talking about past lives, friends and family in outer space, or nightly visits to far-off worlds are quite common. I've heard of near toddlers giving spiritual advice to their humbled parents and then scolding them for their personal mistakes. These are definitely not ordinary kids. Yet many of the children are not starry-eyed dreamers. They're also grounded, mature, and effective in the world, and I mean this world. The young son of a New York writer I know had his own TV show on the Sci-Fi Network. Another friend from Arizona has a teenage son who arranged, without prompting, official meetings with school officers so they could voice concerns about his work. International UN Children's Conferences regularly feature children giving major presentations to the assembly. I have seen many a little angel in the audience standing enraptured at my lectures about benevolent ETs and grand cosmic design. Believe it or not, and I have met many who do, these are the souls who will establish the kingdom of heaven on earth. Mothers of these children often glow with pride, apparently aware, at some level, that something exceptional is going on. They may feel a sacred duty to protect and care for their young ones, as if guarding them for special work to come. In fact, many of these women also expect some kind of social upheaval in the offing, and are already considering where to take the children. They sense that they are part of a larger scheme, a larger spiritual design that definitely involves their kids.
and I think their perception is absolutely correct. If you feel these ideas resonate, then you should also realize that these souls are quite conscious and aware. They are more than able to handle the normal demands of growing up, and they have tremendous spiritual resources at their disposal. Simply put, they know what they're doing, and they know why they're here, and they're ready for any and all earth changes. When I was younger, my grandmother used to call me a little old man cut short, which points to the same kind of maturity under pressure these children can muster. Nevertheless, they are also young and sensitive, and like all children their age, they often struggle for acceptance from their peer group. Of course, they need our support as much as do all children. Their hopes, dreams, and cosmic curiosity needs fertile soil to take root, and their frustrations and disappointments need comfort and care. Some of them are deeply concerned with planet Earth, the biosphere, the animals, and global peace. They too are here to serve, but their service comes fresh from an awareness of social justice and harmony, since the worlds from which they've come reflect humanity's next step. Their service is natural and unforced. By their very presence, they embody the kingdom of souls who will usher in peace. Their role in future society will clarify with each passing year of their lives. I do not think we need to worry too much about their involvement in some of the more wild ways of their peers. As long as there is love, guidance, dialogue, and honest values at home, they will eventually come back to balance. Being sensitive and group aware, they naturally assimilate group influences, often at the cost of self-integrity and their personal values. Like all youngsters, they are simply trying to find their place. Trial and error, though painful and time-consuming, is by far the most effective way to learn. Of course. We all hope they don't get as confused as some of the older wanderers who've been here for centuries. Luckily, they probably will not log on enough time in our present dysfunctional society to really hurt themselves too much. Although teen suicide and drug abuse seems to be on the rise, which in many cases is their response to a hunger for spiritual meaning, hard to find in a global culture that knows very little. In the same way as we can consider ET souls the vanguard of increased human cosmic rapport, we can see these children as the leading edge of the wanderers, as star people among us form a bridge to increased galactic harmony and interchange. So too do these young ones connect us to the new world. Their loyalty and devotion to friends will one day become the bond of love and shared purpose, holding together all members of world society, and it is their task. To put behind us the divisive influences of war, competition, and distrust so prevalent today. Therefore, they bring us great hope and promise, and they do need to be protected and nurtured. We can encourage their growing self-expression through open dialogue, and we can support the honing of their latent discernment by honestly sharing our values. This includes frank discussion about how we feel in society, including our alienation and frustrations. Ironically, many of these children are feeling just the same way, although they cannot necessarily articulate it. As they serve their elders by shining a beacon light, recalling our own purity, innocence, and simplicity, we can do much for them through unconditional love, support, and dialogue. Truly, all the world will be theirs to shape and enlighten with our inspiration. Their time is coming.